Hello everyone, welcome to Jadam. My name is Yang Sang Cho, and today I'll be talking about successful experiment result of extremely simple method to treat drips in agriculture. If you're working in an agriculture field or have read one of my newest book, you have seen how the drips looks like, and I have captured most astonishing footage of drips and published in a book called Jadam Organic Pest and Disease Control. Drips are very small. You might think it is a dust formed inside a flower of your crops, but to absorb correctly, you'll need something called loop. It is like a lighter version of microscope. There are basically three types you can buy from the market and those are usually 10 to 30 times zoom capability. But I recommend more than 15 times zoom in order to absorb the drips. If you aren't aware of this pest, it is very common insect that cause huge damage to almost all crops and you can find those damaged crops image from the internet. Now let me briefly talk about the life cycle of drips. Drips pupa stage is about 1 to 3 days and becomes an adult which lasts about 30 to 45 days. Then it lays about 150 to 300 eggs in between this period and those eggs become at first and second instar nymph. The overall time between egg to an adult takes about 60 days, which means it will be catastrophic for farmers if they can't control the adult drapes because of its hundreds of eggs. And this is reason why they are known as the toughest pest to control in agriculture. I've got many calls for help from farmers and here I am with my Galaxy S20 Ultra to show you the proper demonstration of treating drips. I've tried many setups from DSLR cameras to small digital cameras to take videos of most of the past but this small smartphone is much convenient for me to carry all around when I meet farmers. It is not like in old times the world has changed. And this smartphone always shocks me with its quality of videos and pictures. To make this video, I prepared a light tripod, one liter size spray from Gardena, and a couple of ingredients from JWA, JS, JHS, sodium hydroxide, and red clay powder. The standard mixing ratio I started with was 500 ml. If you're curious about how to make all of the ingredients mentioned above, please watch my how-to videos on this channel. I always recommend the combination of these four ingredients to treat drips, but I have noticed that most of the people outside of the Korea doesn't have an access to ginkgo berry. So today, I will only use JWA, sodium hydroxide, and red clay powder. There's one reminder for treating drips that you have to absorb at least 3 hours to see it's dead or alive. First, I will show you the results only using JWA and the second experiment I will be including sodium hydroxide and red clay powder. I have been working with Mr. Wonsuk Shin who farms green onion and during the experiment, we noticed that treating drips just with JWA is also very effective. So I decided to test myself on Chinese melon. Generally, all the pest control should perform during twilight, but since there are less light on certain period, so I will perform this practice during the daytime for this video. The control rate could be lower than twilight, but still, the result is promising. Speaking of twilight, it is very important to perform the control during early morning because of the moisture level and the temperature. Higher moisture level and low sunlight tends to reduce the evaporation rate of the solution. It is important to secure more time for the solution to be sprayed on the crop. Before starting this test, I would like to say that I have compared with some of the most famous drip treatment inputs in the market and JWA is overwhelmingly better than those that I have tested with. From now on, let me show you how it affects to the drips. And please, don't forget to use soft water before making all the inputs. It has been about 15 minutes and now you can see that drips are not moving or barely moving. If you test the conventional products, you will realize that drips are still active even if the solution is sprayed. And I will show you the comparison of Jadam solution and conventional solution at the end of this video. It has been about 15 minutes and now we can see that few drips are started moving.
It has been around 3 hours and we can see some are not moving, but some does. But if you spray the solution in twilight or early in the morning, you can increase the control rate just with JWA. This is a great alternative way to treat drips for people who have no access to clay powder and sodium hydroxide. And there is a reason why I can confidently say with guarantee is because we have 50,000 registered members in our website and have 70,000 subscribers from YouTube. And I have talked with more than 10,000 farmers and prescribed similar method to them and it worked perfectly. And next, I'll be showing you the result with using sodium hydroxide and red clay powder. As you all know, JWA is an emulsifying agent, but if you add little more, or lot more, it will block the stomata of the insects which will be harder for them to breathe. The function of sodium hydroxide is to create an effect of pain on the surface of insects. First, you will need to melt a substance in a beaker, then mix it with solution. And I'll be using 1 gram of substance for 500 ml. And the red clay powder works as a mine trap. If the sodium hydroxide works as a main chain reaction substance, then red clay powder holds the effect of sodium hydroxide and stays longer on the surface of the trips. So when mixing the red clay powder, make sure to whisk once, then use the surface layer of the powder mixed water. In that way, your spray nozzle will not get blocked and the effects will be much better. As you saw from the previous experiment just with JWA, it is pretty much identical that insects are not moving much at first. It has been one hour and from here you can see the difference that drips are barely moving. It has been 3 hours and I can only see 2 insects are moving. 4 hours has passed and I can see 90% of the drips are dead. Please note that this experiment was not performed during the early in the morning, so the control rate might differ, however, I believe the rate could increase even more under right condition of weather in the morning. What you have seen is the result of hundreds of field practice and with this ratio, you will also have similar result. Because we use potassium hydroxide for making JWA, when mixing another nutrient like sodium hydroxide can cause overgrowth of the plant, so please make sure to use it when using it. The next experiment that I did was using most famous eco-friendly drip solution sold in market in the Korea. As you saw the video using JWA, but with these products I barely see the effects. There is no big difference before and after. The drips are keep on moving all around. So I have increased the double the amount of the solution, which is equals to $100 when mixed with 500 liters, but still, I see no difference. So I went to talk to them, and the answer was very disappointing. They claimed it only works during egg and larva stage, not for an adult drips. Then what is the meaning of spraying their products when you can even get rid of single drips? The egg to larva stage is just few days. This is not right to promote this product as drip solution. It should be just advertised as egg busters, not drips. The law of eco-friendly pest solution control rate should be more than 70%, which means 7 out of 10 pests should die when we use these products. But 
I am very surprised that it can even control single trips. The main ingredient they used to make with is Vovaria bashana, which is commonly found fungus, but it can only control pupa of drips that leaves underneath the soil. Then what is the meaning of having pest solution that can control other drips? Because pupa period of drips are lesser than weak. Most of them are out and roaming around our plant. If you watch my YouTube, what I always elaborate is to diversify the microbes, then the balance will follow. Please don't obsess with certain fungus, microbes or substance. Just follow my way of irrigating JMS on the soil. You'll see that your soil will also obtain Vavaria vasciana. And I have described about making JMS in detail. So if you are interested, please go and watch the other videos as well. In the next video, I'll be back with the aphid solution. As I frequently say in my lecture, once you can figure aphid, you can figure every pest. Thank you, and I'll see you soon with more interesting videos.